on the basics of using Adobe InDesign. It's part of the Creative Cloud suite. And if you're familiar with other Adobe products like Photoshop or Illustrator, this should be pretty intuitive. I'll show you how to, how to make a new sheet from the very beginning, and I'll show you some tricks. This is a really simple software to use. So I'm going to hit New, and I'm going to just start with one page, and I'm going to start tabloid size with a landscape orientation, you see right there. Um, I'm going to unclick facing pages so that each page is on its own. I'm not going to worry about the columns or margins for now. And I'm just going to press OK, and it's going to make my new page. And here on my new page is a typical Adobe user interface. You can see the margins around there. Um, over here on the right is uh, some handy things that we'll be using a lot on the left are the, the tools. And like I said before, um, InDesign works just like a lot of other Adobe programs. The T, for instance, is for text. This is for text. And you can change the text by highlighting it, Control A, and then changing the, the fonts here. I'm going to change it to something nice like Frutiger. And I can change the size of the font here, and et cetera, et cetera. You can figure out how to use the, the um, different functions. It's, it's very simple. Um, and you can always ask us for help if you come across something that you want to do that you're not sure how to. So if I want to import an image, um, you can in import any number of different types of images, JPEGs, GIFs, PNGs, uh, or PDFs all work. And the easiest way is to simply drag and drop. So for instance, I've got um, that PDF I just made of the initial energy model, and I can drag this right onto the canvas here gives me a little thumbnail, I click, and then it um, gives me the whole sheet, cropped actually in this case to the edges of the text. And I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second. And I can easily resize this in a number of ways. If I don't press any keys down, I can drag the border, or the frame as they call it, and crop the image. So this you can crop it to anything you like. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. And if I want to resize it, I can press Control Shift and proportionally resize the image. Um, if I press just Control, I can disproportionately resize the image. So I could make it fatter or taller, um, which I don't want to do in this case. I want to keep it the same proportion. So that's uh, pretty useful. And if I press Alt and the wheel, I can zoom in. Now when I zoom in, you see that this, is, this isn't just bad resolution of my screen capture. This is actually, uh, this blurry image is what I'm seeing on my screen as well. And that's because InDesign um, uh, gives you a fast preview as a way so that you can quickly move from place to place on your screen. Uh, if you want to see in more detail what's here, you can go up to View, Overprint Preview, and then it will give you a more refined view of the um, image. Uh, this will take a little bit longer to zoom in and out of. So I'm going to turn that off while I arrange things. So that's really uh, most of what um, you need to know about InDesign. The, there's a few other tricks I'm going to show you now. The, all of these images are linked to the original file. So this is actually very important. If you're sharing files with someone else, or if you move files around on your computer, there's the possibility of losing the link because um, it's looking, the, the software is looking for the um, file address. And if you move the address without telling InDesign, then it doesn't know where to look. So um, one way to find that is to go to this links um, box, and you'll see on uh, here's the name of the image, and as you move down, 
it will tell you down here the path to it. So in this case, it's on my desktop. Um, but if I then say I'm going to go ahead and move that from my desktop, I'm going to. Um, this is off screen right now, but I'm going to control uh, cut it and paste it somewhere else, and you'll see it updates very quickly and it gives you a question mark saying it's missing. Double click to relink. Re if I wanted to relink, I can double click it and then navigate to the new place where I have it, which is right here. And then I can relink it by opening it there and voila, it's back to um, the new path. And that new path is here. So I want you to be really careful with the links, and as long as you manage them well, you won't have any issues. Uh, just make sure that you've got it in a folder that, um, that is consistent. Okay, so we've got the first page of the PDF in this document, and what if we want to have the second page, which is where we have the graphs? Well, uh, to do that, you can't drag and drop it, unfortunately, uh, because the PDF is two pages, and it's just going to drop the first page. So to do this, you press Control D, and that will place an object. And this is opening where I last uh, navigated to, so you can see my initial energy model right there. And make sure to click this Show Import Options. When you do so and press Open, it's going to give you this Options page, which will allow you to um, insert all of the PDF or just a range of the PDF. In this case, I'm going to, um, it's probably easiest for now to just drop in all of the PDF. And uh, I'm going to press OK. And so there's the first page, which we've already got. And here's the second page, which is the graphs. So now I can erase one or the other to get the first page. And the second page. I've got here, which are the graphs, and I can resize these, again, using Control-Shift to uh, resize them and align them, or something like this. Um, well, what if I wanted to have two pages instead of just one? Well, to, to add pages, go up here to Pages, and um, down here, there's a Create New Page button, and that will add pages and um, to your document, and you can make as, as many of these as you like. Um, I'm going to go here, move my graphs with Control X and Control V, it pastes it, and now I can resize this to be much larger on the page because it'll fit. In this class, I'm going to place a premium on how your presentations look because I firmly believe that if they look clean and elegant and simple, then you'll be able to interpret the data that much faster. And that's a really important thing. What we're going to concentrate on in this class is being able to interpret, interpret the data accurately and quickly. So um, I'd like you to make sure that when you lay out these, they're well composed and elegant. There's an appropriate amount of white space, and it looks good. One way to do that is to consistently format the pages. I'm going to require you to use 11 by 17 landscape format, but also I'd like you to make sure you've got a kind of title block on the page that is consistent throughout the semester uh, so that you have continuity as you build up this report from beginning to end. And in InDesign, there's an easy way to do this, and they're called master pages. So if you notice on this page, there's something called None and something called Master. If I go up to Master, I'll show you what I mean. If I insert here um, something, say, Zero Energy, oops, I'll do this all caps, Zero Energy Building, Bren, Brendan Levitt, and make a nice font, I have a something against fonts that have serifs. So I'm going to use a sans serif font here. And I'm going to make this big so it, it reads. And so if I add that here and I apply that 
to here by taking this and dragging it. When I go here, you'll see, actually I had that text from before, you'll see that it's applied to this. And the same with this one. It's apl automatically applied to this. And the same with this one and this one. And um, if I want to take that off, I can drag this none onto the page and it goes away. So anything you do to that master is going to then be applied to whichever pages the master is applied to, uh, which is really handy because then I can go back to my master and create a kind of title block, control C, control V, and let's say this is the initial energy model and today's date will be 2016 June 23rd I think is is Thursday and actually I'm gonna put this at the top and this at the bottom or maybe I don't know. There's lots of ways of laying this out. I'll leave it to you how you'd like to lay the lay this out. I, I certainly don't want to dictate this part. Uh, I'm going to align this right. And maybe I'll put a line in below. So here's a line tool. I press shift to keep it horizontal. And I can change. Right now it looks like that's probably white. So I can go to my color palette here and change it to black and then I can go to my line tool here and change the weight to say 0.5 point and now I've got a line there. Now you'll notice that there's this blue outline around these um, the text and even around the PDF that I showed earlier. To eliminate that even temporarily you can press control H and that will make it disappear and if you press control semicolon, it'll make the border disappear. So you can preview what your page is going to look like. So if I go to one of the pages now, I can see I just deleted that text. Maybe I want my energy model here to be a little smaller uh, and fit on the page a little better. I'm going to turn on my margins by pressing control semicolon and drag out and um, maybe this is a good start for this page and on the second page I can similarly press control shift and modify this to um, fit better on the page. If I want to go one step further I can go into the master and create guidelines. I do this by going up to the ruler and dragging down and I can drag down to say here so that I'm always going to uh, give a little bit of a margin from that line and uh, then that um, guideline will always show up and I can align to the guideline so that everything's consistently formatted. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please bring your questions with you to class. If you make extra pages, you can simply delete them by pressing, um, by, by selecting them and then dragging them to this delete um, bucket and they'll go away.